Hey, and welcome to an interesting video where we learn that some of the stuff we said earlier we have to be a little more careful about than we let on to. And that is if we're dealing with a strong electrolyte, things are a little more complicated. Remember, what do we mean by a strong electrolyte? We mean an ionic compound that's capable of dissolving. So sodium chloride, when we add it to water, it forms you know, aqueous sodium chloride. And of course, for every mole of sodium chloride we add, we get a mole of sodium chloride dissolved in water. But the thing about sodium chloride is it's ionic, and it actually can dissolve and form these ions, sodium and chloride. And uh, here we go. So actually, for every mole of this we start with, we have a mole of this, but we have a mole of sodium and a mole of chloride. Earlier, we said that the colligative properties depending on the total solute concentration. And it turns out when you dissolve something like salt in water, for every one of these, you actually get two total particles present. And so we have to take that into account. In fact, we'll refer to the number of particles it breaks down into as the Van't Hoff factor. And uh, we'll give that the symbol I. So this is the Van't Hoff factor. So I think he was a Dutch chemist. And this Van't Hoff factor is basically telling us for every one formula unit, how many ions or how many things is it breaking down into when it dissolves in solution. And of course, we call these electrolytes because they conduct electricity because these moving charges are what conducts electricity. So if we go to something like calcium chloride, calcium chloride is something that when we dissolve it in water, it actually breaks down into three different things. It breaks down into a calcium ion and remember, we get its charge from its position on the periodic table, and two chloride ions. Remember, chloride's not a polyatomic ion, so when it breaks down, it's Cl- minus plus another Cl-. minus. So that gives us a total of three things for every one formula unit, so that has a Van Hoff factor of three. Now, if we had something like iron nitrate, so or iron three nitrate, so Fe, nitrate, NO3. Oh, sorry, we don't put the charges in there, do we, at this point? Nope naughty me, and we dissolve it in water, then it will break down into four things. It breaks down into iron 3, and nitrate's a polyatomic ion, so NO3 minus, but of course we've got three of them inside the formula unit, so that gives us a total of one, and another three, so that's four things here. So our Van't Hoff factor for this substance here is four. And we have to take this into account when we're uh, writing down our equations because earlier we said the colligative properties depend on the total solute concentration, but of course when you dissolve one mole of iron nitrate in solution, it's not making one mole of solute, it's actually making four moles of solute because every one of these is breaking apart to four of these in the same way that if you take out three pairs of socks from your drawer, then you've actually got six individual socks, right? Because they come in pairs, but of course you don't wear them on your feet in pairs, you take them apart and you wear one on each foot. So that means we're gonna have to rewrite all our equations and uh, rather than kind of throw everything out and start over again, we're just gonna introduce a fudge factor. So let's see what that looks like. So our old equations, right? So we wrote the freezing point depression is equal to I don't know, the molality of the solute times by the freezing point constant. And then we wrote the boiling point. Do you remember, does it go up or down? Yeah, it goes up. So the boiling point elevation is equal to the molal concentration times the boiling point elevation constant. And the osmotic pressure is equal to the molar concentration times the gas constant times the absolute temperature in Kelvin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fix all these equations to include that Van Hoff factor. And basically all we're doing is we're saying that the concentration of things in solution is the Van Hoff factor times by the concentration of the sodium chloride or the calcium chloride or the iron three nitrate. And this is gonna take into account that when it dissolves, it breaks into this many pieces. So uh, we can go ahead and we can use that now in a calculation. So for instance, what's the osmotic pressure of say 0 0.010 molar, that's 10 millimolar calcium nitrate. That's gonna be aqueous. Um, at a temperature of, say, 33 degrees C. And uh, up to now, right, we would just basically plug into the equation above. Um, so we'd say it's equal to MRT. But, of course, we need to know I. And I is 3 for calcium nitrate. Why is it 3? Well, when it breaks down, it breaks down into a calcium ion. And not one nitrate ion, but two nitrate ions. So every one of these gives you three particles. So when we calculate the osmotic pressure, it's essentially three times bigger than you might otherwise have thought. So it's three, just a pure number, times by the molar concentration, so 0 0.010 
moles per liter. Okay, I can write capital M, but when I write my gas constant, it's a lot easier if you write out the moles per liter because this has atmosphere liter per mole Kelvin, and then you can see the moles per liter cancel with the liters per mole. And the temperature in Kelvin, we just add 273, so 273 plus 33 is 310 Kelvin. Oh, I'm not sure, did I get that on the page? I think so. And then the last thing there is the Kelvin cancels and we're left with atmospheres at the end of the day so when you plug that through on your calculator you get uh, essentially three times 0 0.25 atmospheres and so that is 0.75 atmospheres so without the van Hall factor right if this was just like glucose or fructose or formaldehyde where it doesn't break down this van Hall factor would be one because molecules don't break down in solution and you would get a osmotic pressure of a quarter atmosphere but because it's ionic and because it breaks down into three things then you get triple the pressure so a triple whammy and the osmotic pressure is 0.75 atmospheres which is to say one of two things one either that column if you had water on one side and the solution on the other the column of liquid would go up to a point where it exert a pressure of three quarters of an atmosphere and that would cause it to stop osmotic flow or you could stop flow from the get-go by just pressurizing one side to 0.75 atmospheres and then it would stop the flow of osmosis.